Hi, this is Kerry Artek with Wicked Stocks bringing you the daily Tesla report for Tuesday, September 26, 2023. Before I click through all the charts, it says usual. I want to encourage you to please click like if you haven't already. Please share the content with friends and colleagues. Uh, please um, become a wickedstocks.com YouTube channel subscriber. And please check out wickedstocks.com, where we offer a full suite of both daily and weekly analytical videos, just like the Tesla report. Daily analysis in the SPY and the Triple Q, that is the S&P 500 and NASDAQ 100 ETFs. Weekly analysis in the S&P 500 index, the NASDAQ 100 index, and the long bond ETF, the TLT. As well as two individual stock picks a week that you never see on YouTube that cater to the three to five week swing trader out to the three to five month near term investor. Always looking for 20% moves on those stock picks. And you can see it all for free for five days, no obligation. Sign up for wickedstocks.com. And if you don't like what you see within five days, you can cancel your subscription at no cost to you whatsoever. So check out wickedstocks.com. Let's take a look at the big picture, work our way into the day itself. Just a, a reminder uh, that uh, a couple of months ago, we topped out of this channel top at 318.77. At the time, I was mentioning that as we are testing it, you should allow for a one to two month sell off uh, down to the 233.95 channel bottom. We came close to testing that on Monday. I'll put it out there. I you know, How do I put this? Um, I don't like to put the 1% margins that you can start buying into above that level, but that's also true. I do certainly put the 1% margins below that level for stopping out and going short longer term, and that is 231.61 today. You could have a green line above the black line, on green line above, red line below. The green line above could be the 1% zone above 233.95, and that would be basically 234 above 233.95. You know, it'd be too, I'll let you do it, 236 and change. Um, you know, But I don't put it out there uh, because I don't like to, you know, encourage it. I just leave that up to you. But you should know that if we do slip into the 236 handle uh, today, it does mark the beginning of a zone that you can buy down to 233.95. And then you would bail out below 231.61. Certainly at the end of the week, if we were to close uh, at or below 231.61, that would set up a 190s target that should then be realized in as little as one to three weeks, I'd say by the end of October at the latest, where we find our next meaningful long-term support that may well contain selling into the Q first quarter, and we can pull off of this area. If we were to close below the low 190s, as I said in Monday's uh, video, that would be a meaningful uh, well, it would show weakness substantially, I think, as we move into early next year, but we're nowhere near that, and I'm not anticipating it. In fact, we are holding this channel bottom that's been in development really since the January low, and holding above 233.95 will, over the coming two to three, I'm going to say now three to five months, because <laughs> it's looking more like that, but two to three months, we can, we've seen that before, we've seen those kinds of rallies in Tesla, and we could see it again. Over the next two to three months, the 336.37 channel top is the top of the channel to the bottom at 233.95. So there is that. And so we can work our way up from here. We can recover nicely. I'm going to jump right to the day itself. Actually, what I'm going to show here is this channel structure that we settled below, actually gapped below last Thursday, continued south. Um, there was a 5 8 Fibonacci. It's actually 237.81. I have it as a minor point only uh, because it's just above 233.95. I don't like to crowd my significant levels, but the 5 8 level, it did essentially hold on Monday. 238.31 was the low, and we came off of it, closed positive on the day. I do see, you know, a descending, steeply descending channel top, I might add, today at 253.57. That may well contain daily buying pressures. On the way up, I've got 247.33 as intraday resistance. 247.10 was Monday's high. Uh, I'm adding that because there's a descending, steeply descending speed line now coming down at 247.33, able to contain intraday strength perhaps. Although I will caution you, um, you know, and this this is by by a degree. This is not a certainty. But you know, when we 
break to a new low like this and then close higher on the day. I call that a mini reversal. I'm not sure what it's called in candle speak talk, but uh, in any event, uh, I would allow actually 253.57 today. I think that may well be in reach. And I think it may well contain daily buying pressures. And we could t top out here perhaps early in the day and fall off for the next day or two back to 233.95. You know, the long-term channel bottom that is solid bottom picking territory on the daily chart at 233.75. You can see both levels shown down here. Um, so that is that. If we were to close today above 253.57, I see a good low for the week. And the next two to three days then likely to push into what is now in the low 270s. This former channel bottom combination speed line is still in line with this area here. Once this zone begins to push uh, 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 above the 278.98 high, I'm going to begin to ignore it as a meaningful resistance area. But until then, I think it may well capture, especially if we test it in the next, um, I don't know, two to three days. If we settle today above 253.57, we could, within one to two days, perhaps push into the low 270s where we can place a weekly high and from there perhaps fall off again into uh, what is still right now the lower 230s and climbing 233.75 on the uh, daily chart. Uh, so there's that. Um, if we were uh, to close above, this is probably the wrong chart to show. If we were to close above 273.17, uh, you know, we I see, and where is it? I'm looking for the chart right now, and it is nowhere to be found, uh, but it is 288.77. And what I mean by that is, here it is, 288.77. So I'm going to go back to this. If we close above 233.17, over the next few days, it'll be in the upper 270s here over the next few days as well. If we push through this area, close above it, we really haven't far to go before what I consider to be a more meaningful resistance area. 288.77, uh, able to contain at least weekly buying pressures, quite possibly by that point in time through October trade, and we could fall off from here. It would be a settlement above 288.77 over the next two to three weeks. Uh, and I, you know, let me put it this way. Uh, I'm going to rephrase this just a little bit because, you know, as I'm speaking, I, I forget that we actually came pretty darn close to testing this channel bottom. If let's say we test this channel bottom over the next few days, 233.95 on the weekly chart, 233.75 on the daily. If we test it and come off of it, that same channel structure that I just showed at 288.77 would be reconstructed, but it would be quite similar. So I think for you two to three week swing traders, if we if we break into the low 230s, if we drop, let's say I said earlier, in the 236 handle where we're 1% off of this area, if we slip into this area and you buy the market at 233.75, let's say, you can hold out two to three weeks, swing traders, for 288.77 or a variation of this structure. It would be a little lower in value because this low would be a little lower. It would be more in here, so the angle would soften, but it would eventually be within a few days, 288.77, if you catch my drift. So that is the two to three week sequence that I see. And inversely, once again, if we were to close this week below 233.95, buy that 1% margin. Our two to three week swing trade uh, remains heavy. Uh, I've been anticipating the 190s within two to three weeks, likely, where we could bottom out through the rest of the year. But once again, I'll take you back to today. Uh, we have 257, uh, 253.57 able to contain session strength, possibly into later week. And if we close above 253.57, good low for the week. This 270s and climbing area then expected within several days where we can place a weekly high, possibly into uh, mid-October trade. I think I'm just going to leave it at that for um, Tuesday's Tesla. Please click like, share, subscribe, and check out wickedstocks.com. You have a great day.